everybody rejoice at last at last we have gotten to the point in the story where my beloved blue-haired grumpy muck grumpy pants makes his debut hooray well not that i'll be talking about him a lot in this video there is just way too much to cover but still i think it deserves a mention <laughs> let's get started but first a recap of the previous book in the previous book, Mind finally made her first big step toward making books, securing financial backing from a merchant and the labor of her friend, which enabled her to start making plant-based paper. Lutz learns about Urano and accepts Mind for who she is. Additionally, we got introduced to Frida, a rich girl who finds in Mind a kindred spirit of sorts because not only is Mind in training to become a merchant like her, but the two of them also have the same disease, the devouring. Unfortunately, we learned from Frida that Mind's sickness is incurable, and the only way to live with it is by signing up to work for a noble. Mind's condition begins to get worse and worse until she finally reaches a point where she can no longer control the devouring heat eating her up and she collapses while talking to Benno. Book 3 picks up from there and finishes part 1 of this amazing series. It covers the events in the anime from season 1 episode 11 to 14 as well as one of the OVAs and part of season 2 episode 1. The prologue is from Frida's point of view. When her grandfather gets word that Mine has collapsed and is in need of the magical item, he has Frida retrieve the tool that will save Mine's life. The safe that holds the magical items has just a few more spare tools, all bought at exorbitant prices. We learn that even though Frida has an arrangement with a noble, they are still very important as they are a kind of insurance in case that arrangement goes south at any point. She hesitates for a moment before grabbing a necklace-shaped tool, not a bracelet, reasoning that saving Mind's life and bringing her over to their company is worth it. Frida desperately wants to monopolize Mind and all her ideas and inventions. However, this is more than just greed. We learn that Frida does not want to lose her only friend and envisions a future in which she has Mind by her side and in which they support each other, even after Frida is forced to leave and live in the nobles' district. Frida reasons that if Mine is staying with Benno out of gratitude, they just need to make her feel more gratitude toward them. She hopes that saving her life will do just that. Oh, Frida, you're definitely one of my favorite characters. It's just a pity that your brand of weirdness, which you obviously inherited from your insensitive and manipulative grandfather, is just not compatible with Mine's own brand of weirdness. The rest of the book has Frida insistently trying to make Mine come to see her or to sign up with her company, while Mine is always resisting her attempts to do so. For example, Frida reminds Mine that she needs to make good on her promise to come see her in spring and cook sweets with her, and goes so far as to pick up Mine all the way to her house and drive her in her carriage. Frida uses Thule to get her way, offering her a ride to work in the carriage, just so Lutz is not able to tag along. Tuli falls for it and begs Mine to please leave Lutz behind so she can come along. Another thing about Frida that the anime did not go into much detail is Frida's baptism day. Mine helps Frida prepare for her big day, teaching her maid how to do her hair prettily and how to place the hairpins. Frida's family comes barging in and they are just too much. They're so boisterous and loud and pushy. Frida's mother, father, and her brothers all crowd around Mine to the point of almost overwhelming her, and Frida has to step in and save her friend. With the arrival of winter, Mine and Lutz had a very busy time getting ready for their apprenticeships and making their winter handiwork. Unfortunately, the anime devotes exactly two and a half minutes to cover the events of this time frame, skipping the parts where Mine and Lutz give serious thoughts to their futures. Lutz goes to Mine's house as often as he can for tutoring. He's an incredibly fast learner, having already learned the alphabet and how to write neatly each letter. Mine teaches him how to write supply orders, the names of workshops and foremen that Benno works with most often, addition and subtraction of large numbers using their calculator, as well as has him memorize his times tables. 
By the time winter ended, Lutz was also able to read large numbers and make change from larger units of money without error, and had enough of the basics down to be able to make it through his apprenticeship. While he is at Mainz, Aoife has a talk with him about his future and asks what it would mean for him if Main were unable to become a merchant after all, or what it would mean for him if Main did end up becoming a merchant, but ended up dragging him down because she always relies on him for every single little thing. This conversation helps Lutz really think about his future so that later on when he tells Carla that he will become a merchant with or without mine and with or without his family support, Carla sees that he really is serious about his future and finally gives him her support. Heck, she even starts keeping his older brothers in check when she sees them stealing Lutz's food because apparently it took an outburst for her to realize what was going on. Mine also has to give serious thoughts to her future. Aoife's conversation with Lutz made her really wonder, can she pull her own weight and become an apprentice merchant and not drag Lutz down? Is she even going to live that long? She goes to do paperwork at the gate and while there she has a conversation with Otto where he gives her a reality check which ultimately helps her decide not to become a merchant apprentice at Benos after all. Additionally, he is the one that tells Mine that she needs to quit dragging her feet and come clean to her family about the devouring, so that together they can make a decision about how she's going to proceed. Finally, we learn that Mine and Lutz and their families were very busy with the handiwork, making a total of 186 hairpins, each of them worth 5 middle coppers. Lutz's brothers each earned 6 large coppers and 2 middle coppers. Aoife earned one small silver, six large coppers, and six middle coppers after making 83 flower parts. Thule earned one small silver, three large coppers, and two middle coppers after making 66 flower parts. And mine only earned seven large coppers and four middle coppers, having only been able to make 37 flower parts, which, according to Lutz, were actually the least pretty ones of the bunch. All this money is on top of their own seller's fees that they collected just from giving out work to their families, 186 medium coppers each. These chapters also included much more detailed information about alterations to Mine's baptismal dress and her hair ornament. They also include the talk that she had with her family as well as the scene of her dad crying by himself, both of which hit me right in the feels just as the one in the anime did. Spring is also a very busy time which the anime glossed over fairly quickly. One of the most important activities that take up their spring is actually teaching Benno the paper making process, helping him set up a paper making workshop and train the people that would be making the paper, for which Mine charged him six small golds. Additionally, we get Mine and Lutz desperately trying to make as much paper as possible during this time to sell to Benno as their baptism is getting closer and closer and Lutz will have to give up paper making in order to become an apprentice and the deal with Benno where he pays for all their materials will end after their baptism. So they work really hard so that by the time of their baptism Lutz has almost two large golds of savings and Mine has just a little over two large golds, an insane amount of money for a pre-baptismal kid from the lower city. Let me put this into perspective for you. Ralph's monthly salary as a new apprentice is at most one small silver or 10,000 leones. So by making paper and selling winter handiwork, Lutz saved up two large gold coins or 20 million leones, the equivalent of 2,000 times his older brother's monthly salary in less than a year. <laughs> if that is too mind-boggling, don't worry, I did the math, and it's basically as if he made more than 166 years worth of an apprentice's yearly salary in less than a year. But what if we compare that amount to an adult's salary? Well, we know from the novel that Gunther's salary as captain at the gate is one large silver, or 100,000 leons a month. That is 10 times what an apprentice would get. So then Mine and Lutz saved up the equivalent of 200 times Gunther's monthly salary, or a little over 16 years worth of a gate captain's salary, in less than a year. 
Can you now truly appreciate just how much money these two kiddos made and how insane it is for them to have made it so quickly before they were even apprenticed? And you know, it's a good thing that Lutz has those savings because his parents will be unable to give him the tools for his profession now that he's starting his apprenticeship. Remember how when Tuli was baptized, her parents gave her new work clothes and tools she would need in order to give her a head start in her career? Well, Lutz's parents, ignorant of what an apprentice merchant needs and also too poor to buy him new clothes, are unable to do so for Lutz. So Lutz has to use his own savings to buy those things. Mark takes both of them along to get their apprentice clothes. He also has Lutz buy ink, a pen, parchment for the employment contract, wooden boards, and so on. When Lutz explains his living situation and how his brothers could end up stealing his stuff as he doesn't have a room or a place to keep his things safe, Benno is beyond shocked, never having expected Lutz to live in that kind of living situation, and tells him that he will rent him a live-in apprentice room for cheap so he can keep his things there and change. And so Lutz gained his own personal space for the first time in his life. And finally, Benno also takes them to the Merchants Guild and teaches them where and how to file paperwork, a task that children of merchants already know how to do before even becoming merchant apprentices. The anime covered this part briefly. What it didn't include was the high level of anxiety that it gave mine, the logistics behind how magic contracts work, many amusing exchanges between Otto and Benno, as well as the source of that strange rumor that mine is Benno's water goddess. In the light novel, the moment conflict with the parchment guild arises, Benno orders Mine and Lutz to lay low for a few days and not come to the store until he sorted things out with the merchant guild. During that whole time, Mine is worried sick that if the method for making plant paper leaked out and others started selling it, people could die. She'd had absolutely no idea that the magic could also involve people who didn't have anything to do with the contract. She realizes just how little she knows about the contracts she's signed so far. What if someone unwittingly signed a magic contract about a product that was already in the market? People all over would break it. And what if someone signed a magic contract in a city far away from theirs? How would they keep track or enforce what was basically the equivalent of patent rights? Mine does not know if there is some kind of office or entity that regulates or informs the public what magic contracts were in effect and keeps people safe. Benno explains that magic contracts only work in the city that they were signed in. He declines to explain in great detail about how the city walls and the foundation magic have something to do with it, but says that nobles, they don't mess around with it. Contract magic isn't used frivolously. The magic tools necessary to perform them are only given to certain recognized merchants and are incredibly expensive. And any magic contract that could affect others needs to be reported to the Archduke. Otherwise, the merchant using the magic could be punished if people got hurt. Benno did his due diligence. In fact, he had done so since the autumn, making sure to let the Archduke know about the new product and the magic contract, filing a copy of the contract with the Merchants Guild, filing for a new plant paper guild, and so on. But problems arose because the guild master had since refused to process his request to establish the new plant paper guild, and that had put Benno in conflict with the parchment guild. In the end, Benno and the Parchment Guild reach a compromise, in part thanks to Mind's intervention and ideas of how they can use plant paper in different ways. Otto and the rest are odd that Benno, that stubborn, unmovable rock, budged, and Otto attributes it to Mind's influence as Benno's water goddess, which makes Benno snap at him. He even threatens him with forcing Karina to divorce him if he kept up with his nonsense. <laughs> I love those two. We all know that Otto will continue to spread that little rumor around so that it even reaches the temple. And yet, Benno, even though he says all these things, he's actually far from acting on these threats, since he's counting on Otto to take over for him at the Gilberta company, because Benno is thinking of branching out into a brand new business venture with a plant paper. Now, I really wish I didn't have to do this, but I'm going to have to stop here for now and continue with items 6 through 10 in a part 2 video. 
As you all have noticed by now, with each video, I am covering more and more things that the anime skipped. And the videos keep getting longer. I honestly don't want to edit a 40 minute video, and I don't want you to sit through a 40 minute video either. So, we will stop here. There is still so much left to cover, like things about Mind's baptism that the anime missed, as well as various point of view stories from different characters that the anime did not adapt, including a day in the life from Lutz's point of view, and the interesting story behind Mark's loyalty to Benno and the Gilberta company. So I hope you'll join me for the second part when I cover the remaining five things in the light novel that the anime missed. If you like this video, please click like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Until then, bye bye.